Hi there folks, very warm welcome to you all, James here once again, and uh, rather unsurprisingly you find me uh, leaning up against yet another lovely old oak tree, um, enjoying uh, um, what's become my usual smoke of um, Gowton Hogarth's rum flake in my uh, trusty Grosvenor. Um, I'm out on the bike and not too far from home um, and I thought I'd come out to a spot that I haven't visited for quite some time um, as is the case at the moment I'm finding lots of old haunts that um, I haven't visited for you know in some cases many years and uh, I'm pleased to find things much as they they were we're talking maybe over 10 years ago certainly and this location um, is in fact not far from where I filmed before um, you'll remember a couple of videos back I showed you a an airfield and a, a wartime Second World War memorial um, and uh, I'm in fact in that vicinity, um, in fact on what almost 80 years ago would have been quite a busy parameter road to the actual airfield um, and just um, over that way is uh, still what remains a, a very rough piece of concrete which is original 1940s concrete um, and it's nothing more now than a sort of a woodland, a lovely woodland walk and pathway a bit rough but um, passable by bike um, and this takes you right up onto open field um, which is mainly agricultural now um, but still remains a perimeter road um, which is lovely to see um, and it is useful for obviously farm access and things like that On the way here, uh, I also mentioned also, um, a while back about a, um, a small museum which um, is in, occupies part of what, what remains, all that remains of um, this airfield site and in fact the museum is a little way back down the track um, and it's kind of a, um, there's a modern bungalow there um, and it's partly a farm and a campsite and various things like that but um, there's a lovely little museum which has been there and was opened um, in about 93 I believe um, and um, this is uh, quite a gem of information about this area and and some of the others um, and uh, unfortunately at the moment it can't be visited for obvious reasons um, so I would have loved to have gone in and shown you but I'm in the vicinity and I thought I'd show you the surrounding area and tell you a bit about here I should try and keep it reasonably brief um, but it's of great interest to me I love this the period obviously as you know um, and um, I love to imagine what this would have been like here because the local villages and towns here were um, back in the 40s um, in, well up, you know through the 30s up till 39 when war was declared um, 
but very, very quiet, small places where um, probably not a great deal went on. Um, and uh, so, as is the case with many small English villages and towns, um, along came the Americans and uh, all of a sudden there was a hustle and bustle and excitement of um, interesting people uh, and activities. And so uh, here we had the, uh, the 801st and the 492nd bomb group um, and uh, from the um, US Air Force and um, actually interestingly um, really the, the purpose um, they had and their mission um, was that of um, basically secret missions into occupied France um, to um, to drop off um, various uh, um, supplies, um, agents, um, special forces, and all that kind of really exciting stuff. That for me, I, I, it just it captures the whole um, you know the sort of adventure of, of the adventurous side of a generally horrid circumstance. But um, yeah, so they. Um, the mission, they it was they basically called the Carpet Baggers, um, which is an odd odd name rather. I'm not quite sure where it comes from, but it's the name of the operation um, and the code name that was given to this bomb group. And they flew um, some well 2,263 missions, um, mainly into France and at low level often flying by moonlight um, and these guys um, you know they had general success um, because obviously there were there's radar um, and various ways that um, they could be detected so they got around or they delayed detection by by flying low um, under 2,000 feet I believe um, which um, you know, it requires quite some skill. Um, so yes, this was all from this airfield, um, which is a big site, uh, Station uh, 179. Uh, and there were many others um, in the surrounding area and indeed through the UK. Um, and they were flying the um, the B twenty four Liberators for um, these uh, uh, sort of uh, secret uh, reconnaissance and um, uh, sort of delivery um, situations um, into occupied France. Also from this airfield, um, the lovely old uh, B-17 Flying Fortresses, um, the Dakotas, um, the A-26 Invaders and some British built Mosquitoes all flew from here, so quite a range of planes. Um, and uh, So yes, a very busy, a very busy site. Um, and a total contrast to how it is now, obviously. Um, as I say, um, the museum is basically um, a group operations building and it formed part of a sort of big administration site and that is all that remains building-wise apart from a few little tiny structures um, there, here and about. Um, and so this is where the museum has been 
put together. Um, and as I say, it's a wonderful little collection of information and, and things to peruse. Um, I hope to visit again soon. Um, so, uh, a lot of information um, that's very interesting to me. Further information can be had from their website. Um, and if you put in, obviously, Harrington Aviation Museum, um, they have a good site which details um, all the elements um, that uh, make up this site um, during wartime. And as I say, the carpetbagger operations, um, secret missions, were held during 1944 between January and September. Um, so quite a uh, sort of a, a short run and when you consider how many missions actually did fly it's um, as I say a busy busy airfield um, and uh, lots of people involved I think there were I believe at the height well over 2,000 um, American troops based here um, and uh, so some were um, staying on site in tents. In fact, there were great rows of um, those set up, um, sort of around the sort of perimeter tracks. Um, and they would often be sort of flung about on bicycles or in jeeps, um, as is uh, commonly seen in, in footage. And um, but some also stayed locally in in some of the small cottages that are in the surrounding countryside here and um, yeah, one can only imagine uh, the stir it caused with all these uh, extra things going on and um, people from far off lands coming here um, so I, I, I just find it just so intriguing um, and I don't know anybody that was around at that stage here to talk to. Um, I've read up on it a lot and um, there was this general feeling of um, amusement and wonder I think. Um, so uh, yeah it must have been great and um, so yeah the airfield carried on um, right to the end of the war um, and uh, basically the US Air Force left here in about 45 and um, the whole site was put on to, um, you know, closed down and was just basically maintained. Um, and it um, A lot of it was put back, um, they dismantled a lot of things, tidied things up and um, I think sort of farming operations continued and it was handed back over to um, the local farms and they could commence with uh, getting the crops in uh, and providing for, for all and um, so that was until um, the late 50s and um, just briefly um, Essentially, the site was recommissioned um, by um, the British RAF, and um, this was for the purpose of the um, Thor missiles, um, which were huge, great 60-foot um, rockets, um, and there were three huge, great big launch pads built and all the accompanying, accompanying structures and buildings to support that and um, sort of uh, um, surveillance and um, monitoring uh, bases and, and points. Um, so once again the site was put into use um, and uh, there was uh, nowhere near the amount of um, people here but um, it uh, carried through until 63 and um, they 
uh, were then removed. Uh, again, you can only imagine um, these great huge rockets on their carriers on, on a huge great lorry um, negotiating sort of narrow streets um, on the way to here um, and back then well even now there are no big roads as such um, and there are some great pictures of, of this, these lorries winding their way through the, the, the town um, So that, that must have been quite a sight. A sight. And I, I do, I have an acquaintance who does have some memory of that. Um, so I spend a lot of time talking about that with him. And uh, obviously local lads at the time um, would come up and, and uh, try and get close to have a look, um, as they did during the Second World War, um, just to uh, catch a glimpse of what was going on. And, uh, um, I think it was fairly heavily guarded, um, but I'm sure at various times throughout the the use of this airfield, um, both during the war and afterwards for the when the missiles were here, um, the rockets. Um, I'm sure there were some um, some jolly sort of meetups and um, some friendly folk just uh, shooting the breeze and uh, just having a a chat and enjoying company and uh, so I like to think it wasn't too too strict but um, so yeah uh, that was the last time it was really really in use um, and it uh, essentially was uh, once again everything involved with having the, the rockets here um, was removed and demolished and there is what remains um, you can see um, up on the top road um, there is a, a couple of um, uh, sort of buildings that were left um, which were used for farm storage but um, pretty much everything else is gone uh, except parts of the main runway um, again on that that is a separate site to here. Um, the main airfield um, was a little way over sort of that direction uh, from where I am and uh, some of that remains. Um, so uh, I'm pleased to be able to, to show, share that with you and uh, I, I sometimes come up here, not that I've been up here for a while but I'll come up and have a look and uh, it's uh, good to see. Um, so there we have it. Um, pleasant spot and uh, this um, particular oak tree I think is many many years old and predates um, pretty much a lot of other things in this area because it was quite open um, and most of what creates this sort of thicket and what sort of creates a tunnel down the what's left of the access road here um, it's mainly hawthorns uh, and elderberry um, with a few odd mature trees that have um, obviously been here a long long time um, and uh, it forms a very pleasant um, pleasant area um, and I say I always I do remember this particular tree. Um, it stands out as you walk along the, the path over there. Um, it just it looms there with its great trunk and these lovely limbs that come down. And um, as I say, it's um, there's little pockets of meadowland um, in between these sort of areas, and uh, it's a very pleasant sight. Um, there is a footpath that runs through. Um, but it's not too heavily tramped and uh, pleasant little spot for a pipe so yeah so uh, I hope you're keeping all very well we had um, 
some fairly discreet um, little celebrations for VE Day yesterday and uh, uh, we kind of would have liked to have got it more involved with the street but uh, um, we caught a glimpse of the neighbours um, and uh, we did do a little bit of dancing in the street and um, we had a nice afternoon tea um, and uh, yeah we had a very pleasant day it was lovely and sunny and warm and uh, yes it was not quite the celebrations that um, we were hoping for but we enjoyed ourselves nonetheless and uh, a lot of people went into the spirit of the thing with lots of uh, bunting and flags out um, So that was very pleasant. So with that folks, um, I think that's probably quite enough and uh, I shall uh, finish up here in a leisurely fashion and uh, amble my way back home. I shall wish you all the very best um, and we'll see you again soon and I shall say uh, cheerio.